3D Flamingo Rose Acrylic Nail Art Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi guys, in today's video I am going to be showing you what I call my Flamingo Rose. So it's a flamingo that instead of a regular flamingo body has a really pretty extreme 3D rose on it. It's very pink and very sparkly. I love it. I hope you guys like it as much as I do. And don't forget to click subscribe on my future videos as well. I'm going to begin with a very thin overlay of white acrylic. I'm going to be doing a second layer of acrylic of glitter and then a third layer of a clear encapsulation so that first, well each layer has to be very very thin so that the overall nail doesn't get to be really thick and chunky. So then the next layer I've got this crushed white shimmer pigment. I'm trying, it's, I can't think of what it's called, but it's from C&D, it's a C&D effect, but it just creates absolutely gorgeous little backgrounds and it's kind of, I don't know, it reminds me of almost eyeshadow, like a shimmery eyeshadow. But then I'm going to encase the nail with a layer of clear acrylic to protect all of that shimmer dust I just stuck in there and then file, file the nail into shape with my e-file, starting out with a coarse bit to remove any bulk and then switching over to a finer bit to smooth out the surface texture. Same thing, be careful when you're filing it not to file through all those layers so you don't accidentally remove something that you want on there. Then apply a layer of gel sealer over the whole nail and cure it. So then with pink acrylic, I'm going to be sculpting my flamingo's head and neck. So the reason we applied the gel sealer first or the gel top coat, either one doesn't really matter. If you want to know more about that though, guys, I'll put a link to my gel sealer versus gel top coat video in the description box below. But the reason to apply that first is because the flamingo has a very skinny little neck and skinny little legs and it's a lot easier to sculpt those fine smooth lines if you have a slippery base. So that slippery base helps the acrylic move and makes it easier for you to manipulate it. If that wasn't there, you'd probably have to pull on the acrylic more. You might have better chances of the acrylic cracking, even while you're sculpting it while it's still wet, kind of cracking and breaking apart from each other, and your lines just won't look quite as thin and elegant. So applying that slippery layer first makes the whole thing so much easier. So then on a nail form backing, we're going to sculpt our rose after we have our flamingo's head with head and neck with pink, beak with white, and legs with silver. To start out your rose, I have a two-tone bead of that same pink I used for my flamingo's head and neck, and then a berry color. So just a little bit of that berry color to add a bit of a shadow at the base of each petal. So I've got that starting petal of my little rose there, and I'm just going to leave that on the nail form backing until it sets up. And this part definitely takes a little bit of a little bit of pa patience and a little bit of practice. Knowing when to pick up your petals is something that you kind of just have to learn and I'm one of those people that I will try to pick it up 50 times and then it'll finally be ready and but I'll just try a bunch before it. So after your little petal is ready to be picked up you're going to roll it up just so it's got a nice little circle and then place that. I like to use a cone shaped silicone tool to start out my petals and I use that also just to hold the rose while I'm working on it. It makes it super easy. Then you're going to want to sculpt out all of the rest of your petals on that nail form backing as well. Each of these subsequent petals, that first one was kind of a long bar shape, and each of these next ones is going to be more of a regular circle petal shape. So sculpt either two or three at a time is typically what I do, just so that I'm not waiting so much, especially if you space them out nicely. You should be able to place a petal down with the acrylic, and then after that one's petted out into circle, go back to a different one and pick it up, and then once that one's on, place another one down, go back to the first one, and you know, keep going like that so you get a nice little rhythm with your 3D flower making. And that's again something that once you practice petals and making flowers more, you just you just can do because you know how how they operate a little bit better. So then keep picking up and placing those lovely little petals on there. Press them out so they're nice and thin and you can even rely on the bristles of your acrylic brush to add some really realistic looking petal texture into your roses. So if you have a brush that has a little bit more of a bristle texture to it. If you press it up with that, it'll imprint your petals with that bristle. So just keep going through and you can add as many petals as you want. I would every once in a while recommend going back to the nail if you think it's the right size and just holding the flower up to the flamingo to see if it fills in the body area with the right size and the right shape. And if you need to add a petal here or there, go ahead and do that. But you just want to make sure that it does look appropriate when it's on there. So then after that flower is all done, go ahead and glue it in place onto your flamingo then fill in underneath with a little bit of clear acrylic to secure it onto the nail and make sure it's not going to fall off and also add a little strength to the back of those petals. Then with black paint, we're going to be outlining our flamingo and giving him some facial details. Just go through, I slightly diluted my paint so it's easier to 
easier to paint with and create nice thin even lines with a little bit of white I'm going to be adding the area around his eye and then going back to my black add a little bit more details on his face you can go as detailed or as simple with your flamingo as you like up to you then with a very light pink I'm going to add a highlight just to the very edge of each petal so if you have just a touch of paint and then you brush you hold the brush at a 90 degree angle to the petal and just sort of drag it across the edge of the petal you'll get nice really fine highlights on the edges of each petal just like so and then once you're finished with all of that painting on all of it every highlight is in place then take a little bit of matte regular polish top coat and apply that just to seal the acrylic paint in place and that is it and here is a melody minutes give her a kiss oh so sweet Uh, can you say doodle doodle doo? Can you say bunny? Can you say ribbit? Good job. Can you say Tylenol? Good job. Can you say turtle? Can you sing la 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 la? Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you like my design and that cute little clip of Melody. And she obviously loves our parakeet as well. And I'll see you next time. Bye.